If you have been in the One Piece community for any given length of time, then it is very likely that you have seen some variation of Mihawk versus Shanks being debated in some capacity or another. This topic really strikes a nerve with people. We humans are naturally tribalistic creatures, but there is just something about Mihawk versus Shanks that seems to bring out the worst in man. Maybe it could have something to do with both of these men being very paralyzing characters who we have known since the very beginning of the series and their reputation certainly speak for themselves. Despite them having no more than half a dozen on-screen feats combined, the subject of who's stronger between Shanks and Mihawk has produced some truly, truly toxic conversations over the years and even that is a gross understatement. There are those who believe that Shanks' current status as a Yonko automatically places him above Mihawk and on the contrary, there are those who easily place Mihawk above Shanks the sword-wielding paraplegic for the simple fact that the man only has one arm now. This heated discourse of Shanks versus Mihawk can be talked up to one problem, a big problem, and in order to understand this problem, we must first define and discuss the single word that sits at the root of this controversy, and that word is swordsman. What exactly is a swordsman? A swordsman, according to dictionary.com, is a person who uses or is skilled in the use of a sword. So by definition, given what we have seen so far from both characters, Shanks and Draco Mihawk are both technically swordsmen, but there is where it gets tricky. As we are all well aware, Mihawk is known to all far and wide across the seas as the world's strongest swordsman. When you hear the term strongest, that's normally pretty conclusive, but by now, you and me both know that One Piece isn't exactly normal. Epithets are a prime example of this. Similar to how Mihawk is known as the world's strongest swordsman, Whitebeard was once revered as the world's strongest man when he was alive, and Kaido was dubbed the world's strongest creature. Besides the change in nouns, the one thing all these titles have in common is strongest. There should be no questioning the strength of these men, but oh boy, is there much questioning. In the case of Dracula Mihawk specifically, his status as the world's strongest swordsman is often considered to be fraudulent, although I think this take is absolutely ridiculous, due to the existence of his former rival, Red Haired Shanks. What we know is at one point many years ago, Mihawk and Shanks were once world-renowned rivals, so much in fact that even the mighty Whitebeard acknowledged their past rivalry as legendary. What we don't know exactly is when or how Mihawk attained the title of World's Strongest Swordsman, but it's clear that one man is held as the strongest while the other is not. If only it were that simple. Let's just say, for the sake of conversation, Mihawk and Shanks had a duel over the title of World's Strongest Swordsman 12 years ago, the same year Shanks would later lose his arm in Mihawk 1. The thing is, that was 12 years ago. Shanks was clearly nowhere near his prime as a pirate at the time. Mihawk has outright refused to fight Shanks, even going as far as calling the red-haired wonder a has-been. That's quite the harsh language from one Dracula Mihawk, but if anyone would know how strong Shanks is, it would be Mihawk. The question here stems from whether or not Shanks is still considered a swordsman despite only half the functionality of a single arm. If Shanks is no longer a swordsman, then that would take him out of any running for the title of world's strongest swordsman. This will make sense, however, it's worth noting that every instance we have seen of Shanks engaging in combat, he has drawn his sword. On the Moby Dick, he and Whitebeard cross blades, splitting the heavens in the process. At the end of the War of the Best, Shanks drew his sword as he challenged anyone who dared to, to a fight. And more recently, it was with his griffin sword that he sent useless Captain Kidd to the bottom of the sea floor. So I think it is safe to say that swordsmanship is still a big part of Red Hair Shanks' fighting style. One thing I want to point out is there are an influx of different swordsmanship styles in One Piece and no two swordsmen are alike. Kozuki Odin was famous for his incredible Odin two sword style. Vista is another dual sword user but instead his technique is labeled the flower style. Zoro obviously has popularized what he calls the three sword style. When you look at Mihawk and Shanks what exactly are the respective sword styles? We've seen Mihawk exhibit his famed blade skills in small hints. This is somebody who thought to test himself against Whitebeard by unleashing an attack so powerful it took Division Commander Diamond Jozu to stop it. And keep in mind, this was not a named attack, it was merely a flick of the wrist. Swordsmanship is more than just raw power and hockey input. There is a particular finesse one needs in order to be considered a swordsman. 
Mihawk to me appears to wield his sword the way an assassin would. There is a swiftness to it, a murderous but silent intent that will suffocate you before you have the chance to perceive what is even happening. This style of swordsplay is distinctively different from say, that of Roger and Shanks. When these guys draw their blades, it is followed by overwhelming brute force. One attack from Goldie Roger's ace sword was enough to send Kozuki Odin flying for several meters. Then we see Roger in Whitebeard cross blades, and that there, man, that is a true display of top tier swordsmen. So it's no question that Mihawk is among the strongest in the verse, and in my opinion, there's no shadow of a doubt that he is at least quote unquote Yonko level. Right now, the biggest difference between Mihawk and Shanks is a little thing I like to call Conqueror's Hockey Tax. Here's the thing. Right now, as of this recording, we do not know if Dracul Mihawk possesses Conqueror's Hockey. It would make all the sense in the world for him to have it when you consider that he and Shanks were once rivals and Shanks himself has the color of the Supreme King. As a whole, Conqueror's Hockey has become a bit of a bookmark of sorts for top tier fighters in recent times and this is thanks to our time in Wano where we learned that Conqueror's Hockey can be used in a way we never even thought imaginable. And from what has been shown to us so far, this power comes with an incredible boost. Shanks has displayed the ferocious power of his Supreme King Hockey on a couple of occasions, most notably versus Yusuke Kid. And in that specific instance, it was made abundantly clear why exactly Shanks is held in high regard by everyone and their mothers. The hype is justified, bruh. Whereas with Mihawk, his last on-screen feat was 13 years ago during the Marine for a War, and therein lies the problem with Mihawk versus Shanks. They are two massive juggernauts of the One Piece world who we have seen very, very little of, and really, this is a testament of how damn powerful Mihawk and Shanks truly are. The fact that these two guys are unanimously agreed to be at the peak of that metaphorical mountain by just about anyone you ask says wonders. There is just cause to consider Shanks the stronger man and this is the camp I'm in personally. Even though he doesn't bear the same fancy epithet as his former rival, I'd argue that the name red haired Shanks invokes just as much if not more fear into pirates around the globe than even Mihawk. And I don't think Shanks being stronger makes the world's strongest swordsman title any less meaningful. But you can also make the same argument for Mihawk, where him being stronger than Shanks is not an infringement of the Yonko title. The Emperors are not the end all be all. At the end of the day, the debate over who is stronger might not ever be definitively settled. I feel like unless Oda himself outright confirms which character is stronger, then this discourse will never end. But who do you think is a stronger man and why? Leave a comment down below and until next time, y'all take care. Alright, that's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like, leave a comment, and of course, subscribe. And I'll catch you lovely people later.